So it's March and maybe not everyone's idea of the best time of year to do a rocky shore safari but the great thing about the intertidal is there's always life here, there's always something to see. So I'm heading down my local shore, come with me and let's find as many species as we can in the next 40 minutes. Here you have one of the most common species on the intertidal, on rocky shores, and this is the common periwinkle. Very characteristic looking shell with a tall but blunt spire. And the shell colour is typically this brownish, greenish to black colour, but they can be orange or red in colour as well. You can see there the little operculum closing off the entrance of the shell and this wide shell opening. The other name for this, of course, is the edible periwinkle, and this species is harvested in Ireland commonly, especially for sale on the continent. The common periwinkle. It's not always easy to identify green seaweeds, they're a particularly tricky group to identify, but one of the green seaweed species can quite readily identified is this one. It's called gutweed. You can see where it gets its name. Basically it consists of long unbranched air filled fronds, tubes essentially, like the intestines of some poor unfortunate. And gutweed you'll find most commonly floating in rock pools on the upper shore. And it's very characteristic to look at and easy to identify. And all over these rocks we have what has to be one of the most recognisable species on our rocky shores which is the common limpet. Common limpet is a type of sea snail, this volcano shaped shell and beneath is a large muscular foot which keeps it attached to the rock. They, when the tide comes in they graze over the rock surface leaving little tooth-like marks and when the tide goes back out they return to the exact same spot which is known as their home scar which they'll wear away over time so it fits them perfectly and they'll latch down there and keep nice and dry well excuse me keep nice and wet until the tide returns. So the common limpet. Here's another intertidal resident a lot of people will be familiar with from their youth rock pooling. This is the shanny or the common blenny. And shannies have the ability to survive for extended periods out of water hide beneath the rock and as long as they're kept nice and wet they can survive until the next tide returns. You can find them almost anywhere on the shore, even quite high up on the shore. They're a bit like their cousin the Tompop Blenny but they lack the kind of fuzzy eyebrows that the Tompop Blenny has. So the Shannon, Shanny or Common Blenny. this fella back. Here we have a seaweed of the upper shore. This is the seaweed that you'll find highest up the beach. Uh, it's called channel rack. You can see it's got these um, kind of spaghetti-like almost fronds uh, that branch and if you turn them over you can see that the frond is inrolled. See that there? It's curled in on itself. And that's where it gets its name channel rack. And channel rack is adapted to living high up the shore and it can survive exposure to the air for extended periods of time. 
can even lose most of its moisture and when the tide comes back in it'll rejuvenate so you can find it high up the beach on sunny days or high up the shore on sunny days um, to the point where it's brittle and you can crum crumble it in your fingers but even that will rejuvenate once the tide comes back in so if you see channel rack you know you're on the upper shore This is the beetle at an enemy. The beetle at an enemy is generally red in colour, found in rock pools, um, but also in wet rock across the whole of the rocky shore. They have short red tentacles, stinging tentacles, with which they catch their prey and pass it to their mouth at the, at the centre of the animal. There in the middle. The mouth is in the same place as the bottom. So it's just the one orifice in and out. And one way of distinguishing beetle and enemies from other rock pool and enemies is the fact that they retract their tentacles if you gently poke them. And you can feel the sticky tentacles. then they retract. You can also just about see the little blue rim around the, uh, the base of the tentacles there. And they're found on pretty much every rocky shore in Ireland, so the beadlet and enemy. They also come in green and brown forms. When fully retracted or out of the water, the beetle anemone looks a bit like a jelly glob. You can see the soft body. And you'll see these scattered along the shore among the limpets and the barnacles. Also not looking its best this time of year is another upper shore seaweed species which is spiral rack. You find spiral rack draped, literally draped, over the rocks on the upper shore. Looks a bit like bladder rack but without the bladders. Flattened fronds, prominent midrib. Um, but you can see these twists in the fronds which give it the, its name, spiral rack. And if you see spiral rack you know you're on the upper shore. This is another species often found on the intertidal. A different type of sea snail. This one is one of the top shells. You see the kind of olive browny colour and the very fine stripes. And that tells us that this is a grey top shell. If you turn it over you can see the underside of the shell, again with those fine stripes, and there's the animal itself and the little operculum closing off the entrance. Coming out to say hello. Well, the first species I found here on this shore is egg rack or knotted rack, which is really characteristic seaweed of the middle shore. It's got these long strap-like fronds, with very large air bladders, one after the other, almost like a necklace down the frond. This one's covered in reproductive bodies, these little squishy kind of pustules. And you can find it absolutely everywhere in this area of the middle shore. So egg rack. Growing on this piece of egg rack here, we can see another type of seaweed. This is rack siphon weed and it's hemiparasitic, it means it takes some of its nutrients from the seaweed 
but not all. It also photosynthesizes. It grows in these characteristic small tufts, especially on egg rack, and no other hemiparasitic weed grows to such an extent on egg rack as rack siphon weed. It's actually very edible. It apparently tastes like truffles and if you scrunch it up in your fingers it'll give you that kind of earthy truffly smell. So another one to watch out for, rack siphon weed. Just under this rock here we found this guy which is a butterfish. Gets its name by being really slippery and hard to catch so I'm not gonna try. You can see its characteristic spots along the back. Uh, it's eel-like shape. A really common species found on the rocks on the mid to lower shore. And a favoured food of a whole range of species including things like black guillemot. So the butterfish. In this rock pool here we found some coral weed. Which is a really typical seaweed to find in lower shore rock pools. It's quite unusual for a seaweed in that it has a chalky skeleton. The individual segments look a little bit like bones. And for common coral weed, this one here, you can see that the tip of each frond ends in a trio of segments. If you actually put coral weed between your teeth, you'll taste, or you'll find that it's chalky and crunchy uh, because it's built on a structure of carbon, car calcium carbonate. So, coral weed, one of four coral weeds, this is common coral weed I should say, one of four coral weed species found in Ireland. There's not many sponges you can easily identify, period, and certainly on the intertidal there's not too many sponge species to be found. This is a classic sponge species of the intertidal though. It's a yellow-ish encrusting sponge. These characteristic volcano-like openings. And this is breadcrumb sponge, which is very common on the intertidal. Especially in areas where it's damp, like cracks and crevices, or down by the water's edge. Yellow and encrusting mostly, but it can be a more orangey colour as well. So, breadcrumb sponge. Just lying on the shore here, I found this, which is quite a common species of the lower intertidal. Really, you find it on the very edge of the water. That's one of the kelp species. There's two very similar species, known as cuvie and oarweed. And these are the species that form kelp parks just off our coast here, which act as a fantastic habitat for a whole range of species, invertebrates and fish. So how do you tell them apart? Well, this one has a flattened frond with finger-like projections. The stipe or stalk is flattened top to bottom. And it's extremely flexible, so if I bend this in half, it's not going to snap. It has a hold fast for attaching it to the rocks, and the stipe as well is completely flee free of animal or plant growth. So that tells me that this is ore weed. Broad clawed porcelain crab is often found beneath rocks on the lower shore, where those rocks lie on a kind of a silty or sandy substrate. They, you can see where they get their name, with the very broad front claws. They have very long antennae, very small crabs. If I put my finger beside this guy, you should be able to see that's the tip of my small finger. So very small crab species, and very flattened because they spend their lives living on the underside of the rocks. They have hairy claws. Uh, it doesn't show up too good on this guy, but very characteristic. And um, as I say, extremely common beneath rocks on the lower shore, on some beaches. That's the broad clawed porcelain crab. 
in this crack here in the rocks, I found a very characteristic species of the lower shore. It's a red seaweed. It's called bunny eared beadweed. You generally find it where it's very wet and moist, cracks and crevices, rock pools. Its body is made up of segments, a bit like sausages, one after the other. And the tips of those fronds typically end in a pair of segments that give it its name. They look a bit like bunny ears. Thus, bunny eared beadweed. So, here I have zoomed into it on my hand. You can see the individual segments which make up the body of the seaweed, like little sausages one after the other. And then, typically, each frond ends in a pair of these little segments, which gives it the bunny ears appearance. Bunny eared beadweed. Also found on this rock here the very ancient type of mollusk, which is the chitin. Their shell resembles kind of a coat of arm or a chain mail or something like that, interlocking plates. And beneath the shell, of course, is a, a foot, like many of the, like the limpets, for example. Uh, it attaches onto rocks and grazes here. We have about 12 different species of chitin in Ireland. They're quite difficult to identify, um, but with a bit of practice, I think you can get your eye in. So the chitin. Keep an eye out for them, especially on the lower shore. Another very common kelp species found washed up around the coast is cuvi. And this is probably our most important kelp species because it fo forms kelp parks, which are habitat to a huge diversity of seaweed, invertebrate and fish species all around the Irish coast. The stalk or stipe of cuvi is generally crinkled and quite often, as in this case here, covered in epiphytes of seaweed and also uh, various marine invertebrates such as, in this case, barnacles and there's some sponges and a few other species here growing on the stalk. Again, it's got long finger-like fronds, typically with things like sea mat again growing on them. Uh, the main difference is the stipe of, of cuvi is circular and when you try and bend it in half, it snaps. It's much more brittle than boarweed is. So if you find kelp, long finger like fronds, a rough stipe with lots of stuff growing on it, that's going to be cuvi. Underneath this rock I found another type of starfish. This one is a cushion star, a common cushion star. You can see a different shape again for a starfish. Very short arms, looking a bit like a pin cushion. But beneath you can still see as the tube feet and Cushion stars are typically found uh, attached to the underside of rocks on the lower, mid to lower shore, especially where there's sandy sediment around. A common cushion star. In this rock pool here I found another common rocky shore resident, which is the common prawn. They have a very strange, almost see-through body brown markings, their little pincers up front and they scavenge on bits of detritus and eke out their living in rock pools. There's two species very hard to distinguish by eye but a firm favourite with every body who goes rock pooling is the common Prawn. 
Northern toothweed is the seaweed species more typically found, as the name suggests, on northern coasts of Ireland. It's quite a characteristic seaweed species with flattened red fronds and a fairly distinctive midrib. But it has these very characteristic serrations or teeth to the edge of the frond which gives it its name. Northern toothweed, when it does occur on shore, tends to be found in lower shore rock pools, but it's more common as a subtital seaweed species. It's got this very reddish purplish colour and quite distinctive, so it's one worth looking out for, especially if you're up around Donegal or the north coast of Ireland. I just turned over this rock here and found this little chap or chap s hiding underneath. And this is a common starfish. It's only a juvenile, they get much larger than this. The great thing about the common starfish is they're water powered. They have small tube feet on the underside with which they move around and latch onto things. And their main prey is bivalves like mussels. And they wrench them over open using their water powered arms and they never tire. Whereas the poor old mussel is relying on mussel power and does tire quite quickly. And so the starfish almost always wins these battles. You'll find juveniles like this all over the lower shore, especially under rocks. That's the common starfish. So a couple of interesting seaweed species in this rock pool here. One of them is one of our kelp species, which is Dabberlox. Now Dabberlox, as you can see here, has a long frond with a very prominent midrib. A spear-shaped frond and then a pointed tip. And a very fine, membranous frond either side of the midrib. This is only a juvenile, the adult grows to a few meters long. And in the adult as well, when the reproductive season is upon us, it will have finger-like projections called sporangia at the base of the stipe. So it's a very characteristic looking seaweed kelp. Dabberlocks. And here on the mid to lower shore, you'll often find this species here. This is the dog whelk. Usually white in colour, it can come in a whole range from a pinkish to even stripes, stripe colours. It's a very characteristic shell with this extremely pointed spire and a, a razor sharp point to its apex. And this channel for the siphon, and that's very characteristic. When you see that channel, you know you've got a whelk species. And this one is dog whelk. It's one of the top predators of the intertidal. What it does is it makes its way onto the shell of a bivalve, let's say a mussel, uses its tongue with extremely sharp teeth or radula uh, to drill into the shell of the bivalve and then it inserts digestive juices and sucks the poor unfortunate bivalve out like a slush puppy. And literally dog whelks kill thousands and thousands of bivalves and other species on the intertidal. So one of the top intertidal predators. The dog whelk. When it comes to the intertidal, it literally is a case of all creatures great and small. And this is one of the smallest. This is a dwarf brittle star. A starfish species, one of the brittle star group. And it's tiny. This one's in the palm of my hand, and it's literally only a couple of millimetres across. It has this disc-like central body with thread-like arms coming off of it. 
And in each house it's living beneath the rocks on the lower shore, especially where there's sandy sediment. It's quite characteristic due to its small size. Dwarf brittle star. Possibly the most common seaweed on the middle shore is this seaweed here, which is bladder rack. Another rack species with a flattened frond and a fairly characteristic midrib. The real giveaway for bladder rack is these paired air bladders that run along the length of the frond. The bladders then will pop because they have air in them and they serve to keep the plant upright in the water column to gain nutrients and help with photosynthesis. So if you find bladder rack draped over the rocks, you know you're on or about the middle shore. Sometimes on the intertidal things aren't quite what they seem. So here apparently we have a rock pool with strange pink rock inside it. But of course the truth is this isn't rock at all. You can see here the actual rock peeking through from beneath this covering of a pink encrusting seaweed. So it's a calcareous seaweed related to the group like the common coral weed that we see here. It produces a skeleton-like calcareous structure that covers the rock. And anywhere on the lower shore in some areas where you have rock pools you will have the entirety of those rock pools filled or covered with this calcareous pink encrusting seaweed. And on the seaweed here on the mid to lower shore I found this species here. It's got a bright yellow shell, very small sea snail with a very flattened spire if you can see that it's flat to the shell. And this is the flat periwinkle. Flat periwinkle is not just one species, but in fact it's two species. But they're almost impossible to tell apart in the field. So we just call them flat periwinkle and record them as a group. They feed on racks in the mid to lower shore. And they're a very characteristic species of that area of the shore. Flat periwinkle. And here's another variation of the flat periwinkle. You can see on this one, has a yellow body but these very characteristic stripes mark patterns on the shell. It's one of the many varieties of flat periwinkle you'll find on the lower shore. So sometimes in the intertidal you'll see a periwinkle that's moving way too fast. If you take a second look you might just see that it's not a periwinkle at all. It is in fact one of these guys, which is a hermit crab. If you leave it down in a pool and leave it well enough alone, it'll come out to say hello. incredibly common in lower shore rock pools. So keep your eyes peeled for the hermit crab. This one's a common hermit crab. So this is a bit of a lucky find in a rock pool here. Not necessarily the place we normally find these but Something that we often get queries about when they're found on the intertidal. Mainly because they're bright green, jelly, blobby like things, usually attached to bits of seaweed. If you look closely inside you'll see it's kind of like a bright green mass of stringy stuff. People wonder what these are. Well the answer is not as exotic as you might think. They're essentially the egg sacs of polychaete worms, specifically paddle, paddle worms. And you find these quite frequently on the intertidal. 
um, as I say, attached to seaweeds and the like. So polychaet, paddleworm, egg sacs. Serrated rack is another really easily recognised seaweed species. It's a typical species of the lower shore, although it can be found up into some areas of the mid shore. It has a flattened frond with a fairly prominent midrib and these really easy to recognise serrated edges which gives it its name, serrated rack or toothed rack. It's a habitat for a lot of invertebrate species so always well worth turning over um, clumps of serrated rack to see what's growing underneath. So serrated rack, if you find it you know you're on or about the lower shore. Another species you'll find on the lower shore is a red algae known as pepper dulse. It's got very characteristic fern-like fronds, blunt ends, a very small seaweed lives closely kind of cropped to the rocks. Pepper dulse, one of the many seaweed species you can eat and as the name suggests it has a peppery taste to it. Just flipped over this rock here and found this guy which is a polychaet worm. Now there's literally hundreds of different species of polychaet worms and they're all very difficult to identify. This one looks like one of the paddle worm species, quite short, these paddle-like legs. But the intertidal is literally stuffed with polychaete worms of all shapes and sizes. It's quite rare to find them out like this and an awful lot of them are buried in the sand and the sediment. So polychaete worms, in this case probably a paddle worm, always worth keeping your eye out for. Sometimes washed up in lower shore rock pools you find seaweeds that don't grow on the intertidal but grow subtidally but they become detached and get washed up. This is an example of one of them. This is red rags and you can see where it gets its name from. It looks a bit like a red rag. It looks a bit like dulse but it's much thicker and a leatherier feel to it and this one looks like Swiss cheese has lots of holes in it. Um, one of the kind of red seaweeds that's relatively easy to identify, red rags. You won't find it generally growing on the intertidal, but you may find a washed up. Here in this rock pool I found a very rare find for the intertidal anyway. This is Alicia viridis, or the sap sucking slug type of sea slug, generally found in habitats like seagrass and places like that. You can also find it here on the intertidal. As a green body colour, these darker head, a little dark bit to the tail. And this animal is only a few centimetres long, so very small sea slug. And you can just make out the characteristic spots on the body there as well. Elysia viridis, the sap sucking slug. Just hiding under a rock here, we found this little polychaete worm here. In this view you can see his underside but once he turns over you'll be able to see that the upper surface is protected by overlapping plates so this is a scale worm. It's another type of polychaete worm. Many different species of scale worm as with all the polychaetes you find them quite frequently hiding under seaweed and rocks on the intertidal. So the scale worm. 
Dulse is one of our best known seaweed species and easily recognised by most people, mainly for the fact that we've eaten it for generations. Typically it's harvested and dried out on the stones in strong sunlight and is eaten dry. It has a very flat membranous frond which although it feels kind of papery or rubbery it's actually quite tough and not that easy to tear. It grows on rocks and on kelp on the lower shore but it's quite frequently found cast up higher on the shore along the strand line. A red or purplish colour. Dulse, if you find it attached to the substrate, is indicative that you're on the lower, mid to lower shore. It's always worth turning over rocks on the shore because you might find species like this underneath. This is the common shore crab, a really familiar crab of the intertidal. And its carapace has five little serrations either side of the eyes, you can see those there, and three little bumps between the eyes, and that's how you tell them down to species level. They're like a Swiss army knife of crabs. They have claws for pinching and breaking up their food, as he's trying to pinch me there. They have spiny legs for holding onto rocks, like this guy is holding onto my finger. And then the back legs are flattened slightly to help with swimming. So they have a leg for every occasion. A very characteristic species of rocky shores, the shore crab. And here in this rock pool I found a very different kind of intertidal sea anemone. This is the snake locks anemone. Very different in colour to the beadlet anemone with much longer tentacles. You can see the tentacles in this one are green with purple tips. But it also comes in a brown form and a greyish form. One well, of the key differences between this and the beadlet anemone is if you touch the tentacles on this species they don't retract. It doesn't fold in on itself like the beadlet anemone does. So certainly one of our more colourful anemone species, the snake lux anemone. And here we have some thongweed. Many people know thongweed in its adult form where it grows in strap-like fronds, occasionally branching fork-like, but generally growing in extremely long almost spaghetti-like fronds, uh, up to a few metres in length. However, this is how it starts out. You can see at the base, it grows from this small button-like feature at its base, and then gro starts growing up, occasionally branching. And that'll keep growing to its adult form when it's a number of metres long. And it grows up to about as thick as your, your finger, that kind of width but flattened. So thong weed. So thanks for joining us on our Rocky Shore Safari today. Today we saw some common species and some not so common species. It's important to remember, I suppose, when we're on the rocky shore, any particular stretch of rocky shore will have upwards of 100 or more species. So don't be too worried if you can't identify everything. Start out with what you recognise and you can record and build up your knowledge step by step. There's lots of online resources available and some great identification books out there. Further information on those is available on exploreyourshore.ie on our resources page, so have a look at those. Please do take some time to visit the exploreyourshore.ie website. On the website you'll find out more about the project and our partner projects and Everything you need to get involved in Explore Your Shore is on that website, so please visit us at exploreyourshore.ie. To get involved in Explore Your Shore, all you really need is either a smartphone or a pen and paper indeed, because we've paper versions of all the forms and a camera so you can take photos of the different species you come across and submit them to us with your records. So visit the website, read about the different surveys, pick whichever one appeals to you at what level you'd like to get involved in the survey and give it a go. Take part, don't be afraid 
And as you participate in the various projects, you'll find that your knowledge and your familiarity with intertidal species grows day by day. So visit us at exploreyourshore.ie. 